Hello, 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 Kevin here, and today I am making a bit of a supplementary uh, chaos programming episode because a couple of you pointed out that in the last video, I screwed up when we were, uh, specifically, when we were estimating the time it would take to complete a particular maneuver. What we did is we calculated our maximum acceleration by taking the thrust of the engine and dividing it by the mass of our ship. We said, okay, that's our acceleration. And then we said, okay, well, we've got our delta V that we know that we want to complete, our change in velocity. And then we'll go ahead and just say, divide that by acceleration, which kind of makes sense, right? If we assume that we're going to accelerate at 10 meters per second, per second, or you could even write that as per second squared. If that's our acceleration, then we go, okay, and we want to burn until we are going 100 meters per second faster than we were, well, we go, okay, well, this is gonna take us 10 seconds, right? We take our total change in velocity, divide it by this, and we get, okay, 10 seconds. 100 divided by 10, 10 seconds. Perfect, absolutely perfect, correct? Well, as some of you pointed out, there is a problem, and that is that our acceleration is not constant throughout the burn, because as we are, uh, propelling ourselves forward, we are losing rocket fuel to do that. And so the mass of our vessel is going to change. And so I've been looking at, okay, how do I fix this? And is there a way that I can do it without calculus? And I decided ultimately that no, I can't. We've got to do some calculus. So I apologize for that. That's why this is a supplementary episode. Um, if you're not interested in the calculus, it's okay. We're just gonna update our estimation function and we'll use it in the next episode, but I wanna walk through, for those of you who are interested, how we can get a more accurate maneuver prediction time. So first things first, how do we figure out what our acceleration is? Well, we have the equation from uh, first semester physics, that force equals mass times acceleration. F equals M times A. We know, okay, well, we wanna solve for A, so we'll divide both sides by M. We go, okay. These cancel out and we end up with F over M equals A. So A equals force over mass. And that's great. That's going to give us what our acceleration is at any particular point in time, provided that we know what this mass is. Which of course, we don't necessarily. So let me go ahead and write this in a slightly different way. So I'm gonna go ahead and say F over M zero which is gonna be our starting mass before we completed any of the burns. So that's what our ship's mass is before we started doing anything. And then we're gonna subtract delta M, so our change in mass over time, and multiply that by time. That makes sense, right? So if our change in mass is some you know, kilograms per second, we multiply that by a number of seconds, we'll go, okay, well you lost one kilogram. And we'll subtract that from what our starting mass was. So this is going to be the amount of fuel that we lose per second, we'll multiply it by seconds, then we end up with this, which gives us A, again, our acceleration. So there we go, that's fantastic. But the problem is our delta V is not the acceleration at the start is not the acceleration at the end. It is the total of all of the acceleration in the course of our burn. And to do this, we need to use an integral. And this is where if you're not familiar with calculus, it can start to get a little bit scary. Um, so I'll go ahead and draw this symbol. It looks very Greek and mathy. And we know that this is going to end up equaling our delta V, the total of all of the acceleration that we have done in the course of our burn. And this is gonna go from zero, we've not done any of our burn when we just start, all the way up to some value, uh, we'll call it, I don't know, let's call it T1. So time one is the time when our burn is finished, and that's gonna mean that all of the acceleration that we have done has totaled up to this change in velocity that we expected. Now the cool thing is that we do know what our force is, that's something that we can get from the engine. The engine will tell us exactly how much force it can produce. We know what our delta V is, because we've already calculated that in the past. We want to solve for this ending time. We know what our, you know, we want to be going 100 meters per second faster. We know what our starting mass is. We don't know what time is at this point. We don't know what delta M is. And actually, because this is an integral, we actually need to integrate on a particular value. So I'm going to go ahead and add dt. Here. So this is for all values of time between zero and 
uh, our ending time, then this is what our acceleration is. So our change in velocity is the total of all the acceleration that we've done for every moment of time between zero and our end time. That sort of makes sense. So now we have to solve for this delta m value. So now we need another formula because we want to know how many kilograms per second is our engine going to burn for a particular amount of thrust. We actually can get this by looking at the rocket's specific impulse, which is called ISP. So there's a formula that we get from orbital mechanics. Well, actually, we're not gonna start with ISP. Uh, it's that the force, the thrust that the engine produces is equal to the ISP times this change in mass times the gravitational acceleration constant. This is 9.80665. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let's rewrite this equation in terms of our change in mass because we want to get the number of kilograms per second that we are losing for a particular point in time. So we've got this force here. We'll just divide both of these sides by ISP and G0. Divide this by ISP times G0. And these will go ahead and cancel out. And there we go, we've got our formula that delta M is equal to force divided by ISP times G0. And I'm just gonna go ahead and write G just to keep things a little bit simple. So okay, now we've got a formula that will tell us how much mass we are going to lose for every second that we are burning at max thrust. Well, we can go ahead and take this bit and plug it in to our original equation. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here is our nice and simple and happy equation that will give us the delta V for a particular time range. Now this is kind of cool because it means that we could plug in, if we had a known time, we could say, okay, how much change in velocity are we going to get if we burn for exactly three seconds? If we knew what this value was, this ending time, well then we could just sum up the total of this value for all from zero to that time and we could get the total delta V out. That's not what we're trying to do though. We wanna solve this. We wanna solve for this upper bound. We wanna say, when is the total going to equal this amount? So one of the properties of calculus is that if you have a function and you call it, let's say, f of x, we take the integral of f of x from some bound from a to b, we can say that, well, sorry, dx. What we can say is that this value from a to b is going to be equal to an antiderivative function, it's capital F, of b minus the antiderivative function of a. And as far as getting the antiderivative function, well, there are a bunch of properties that you can apply to all of this junk in here to get that, but it's been a while since I took my high school calculus, and with all this stuff down here in the divisor, it's all just gonna be complicated. So one of the things that we can cheat on is we can plug this into Wolfram Alpha and just tell it to go ahead and please integrate this for us in terms of T, and we actually get a value out there. So let's go ahead and let me write down what we got out from there. Okay, so the antiderivative that we get is negative g times ISP times the log, the natural log of g times m times the ISP minus the force times t. Close parenthesis. Okay, this looks complicated, right? But the good news is that we can make the computer have to worry about it. So this is our, you know, if we, so this is our delta V, our small delta V. Well, if we had our, our antiderivative, we'll call this big delta V. We'll set that equal to that. And what we can say is that the delta V that we want is this big delta V function of uh, T1, that ending time, minus the big delta V of zero. And that's gonna give us the actual delta V that we want. So now to solve this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in these T values in here. So we're gonna say, okay, so the, in, this, uh, in this case we have T1. We'll go ahead and just put that, leave that in there. 
We'll say, so take all of this and then subtract a copy of this where t is zero. Let's go ahead and clear that out. So we'll say that minus negative g times ISP times log of g times m times ISP. And actually, because we know that in this case, in the second case, t is zero, we don't even have to worry about that term. So hooray, we've made it a tiny, tiny little bit simpler. So we have this value minus this value. Of course, because we've got two minuses here, this becomes a plus. We can get rid of that whole thing. Well, no, we should leave the plus on there. Plus this whole thing. So now all we have to do is try and simplify this very annoying and complex equation. And I'm going to go ahead and save you the steps and just write out what it simplifies down to. And uh, I want to say thanks to some of the folks on the uh, KOS subreddit for helping me with this because I didn't quite get it down to its simplest form. So in addition to actually simplifying these terms, we also need to rewrite the equation in terms of t. And what we end up with is that this t one value is equal to g times, uh, okay, well, well let's, let's use the actual figure here, g zero times our starting mass, m zero, times the ISP, times one minus e to the, let's see, negative delta V divided by uh, G zero times the ISP. And is that it? Let me think. Um, close that off. Divided by F. There we go. So there we go. There is our formula finally derived that will give us the amount of time that it takes to complete a maneuver given that we know this g value, we know the starting mass, we know the specific impulse, and we know the, de the delta v that we are going for. And when we go ahead and we plug that in, I ended up scripting that out, but we'll go ahead and jump over and take a look at that real quick. Okay, so here we are in our original function back from the previous episode, and we have this maneuver time, and it takes a delta V, and it, we figure out our acceleration based on our thrust and our mass, and then we just divide the delta V by the acceleration. But we know now that that is a foolish way to do things because our mass is not consistent. So let's go ahead and delete all of that. And I've gone ahead and written up this... Uh, better function based on what we derived. We're still gonna take in this parameter delta V. We're gonna list all the engines into a variable called EN, and that's just gonna give us, you know, engine one, engine two, etc. And I'm gonna assume that we're just looking at the first engine. We're gonna get the ISP, the specific impulse of that engine, and the thrust of that engine. Um, so, okay, now I'm gonna say local F, and this is the same as set F to something except that it means that we want to make sure that if an f exists outside here we're not going to accidentally change so if we had you know set f to five and then we call the maneuver time it might accidentally adjust that variable so i'm going to say local f is the max thrust of that engine and then multiply it by a thousand because we get this in kilonewtons a thousand newtons rather than newtons and we want them in newtons so that when we convert all of these units they're all kosher so then we're going to say m is the ship's mass. And again, we're getting this in tons, so I've got to multiply it by a thousand to get us in kilograms. We're gonna say set E to the constant E. That's just a global variable constant. Um, and then we'll go ahead and set P to the engine specific impulse. And that's in terms of seconds. I'm calling this P in the on the whiteboard, I think we said ISP, but then we'll say G is 9.8. 0665. It's worth noting that in previous versions of KSP, this was 9.82, but it looks like since 1.0, they have actually fixed this. So it is now accurate, which is great. So then all we have to do is return that formula that we derived, G times M times the ISP times one minus E to the negative delta V divided by G times the ISP <laughs> divided by the force. You'll notice that none of this formula actually uses calculus 
in and of itself, but we needed to use calculus to derive the formula to begin with. So there we go. We now have a way to accurately predict our maneuver times and set up exactly when we need to burn. Um, I want to thank you all for catching that, and I hope that this uh, video wasn't too head scratchy. It confused the heck out of me when I was first trying to figure this out, so I hope that that gives you some solace, and I will. Uh, we will definitely be using this in the next episode, so I will hope to see you then. Cheers.